I booked a JetBlue flight from Phoenix to Turks and Caicos for $15.60 per person, and I had some help from Chase credit card points. The total price for two tickets was $451.40 in economy, and I did not feel like paying cash, so I transferred out my Chase Sapphire Preferred points to JetBlue Miles, and there was a 25% transfer boost when I made this booking. While this isn't the best points redemption I've ever done, it did help me avoid paying $450 on plane tickets to the Caribbean, and I'm especially grateful because Turks and Caicos is an expensive destination. In this video, I'll tell you why I chose JetBlue for my airline and Chase points for my currency, and of course, we will walk through the process of actually booking the flight, and I'll tell you how many cents per point I got for this booking. Okay, so why did I choose JetBlue? There were a ton of options, JetBlue, United, American, Delta, Southwest, there was even some other airlines like Sun Country, which I've never flown before. Since there were a lot of options to choose from, I wanted to pick the one that was going to be the least amount of credit card points coming out of my account. United, Southwest, and Delta, while their routes were convenient for me, leaving from Phoenix and just having one layover until we got to the Caribbean. Their points price was just too high. For United and Southwest, I would need Chase points, and Delta, I would need American Express points. I have plenty of Chase and American Express points, but the price was just too high. The only other airline that I could use points for was American Airlines, and I only had 10,000 points in my account, and so even though the flight was only gonna be 10,000 miles to get there, I wanted to make sure that I actually used my American miles for my flight home, so I was left with JetBlue. Even though I wasn't a huge fan of flying northeast to New York City for my layover, when I'm trying to go southeast to the Caribbean, I still thought that this was good enough and it gave me the opportunity to go to the JFK Centurion Lounge. So now that I had JetBlue as my airline, why did I choose Chase Points? Well, there are three credit card issuers that can transfer their credit card points to JetBlue Miles, and they are Chase, American Express, and and city. Well, I don't have any city points right now. Hopefully I'll get some soon, but that was just unavailable to me. So now I was down to Chase and American Express, but American Express does not have a good transfer ratio to JetBlue. For every one American Express point that you transfer, you only get 0.8 JetBlue points. So was it not worth it for me, especially because Chase had a 25% transfer bonus. So that meant one Chase point equaled 1.25 JetBlue points. Because I just needed a little under 34,000 JetBlue points to make this booking happen, I only needed to transfer out 27,000 Chase points. If you've never earned or transferred out Chase points before, I'll give you a quick rundown. The number one way to earn Chase points as fast as possible is to earn sign-up bonuses, and that is by signing up for new credit cards and hitting whatever minimum spend requirement that they have, and Chase will give you a ton of points for being a new customer or trying out a new product. I like the Chase Sapphire Preferred for this one because you get 60,000 Chase points by just spending $4,000 in the first three months of holding this card. I actually transferred out my Chase points through my business card. It is the Ink Preferred, and that is going to give you 100,000 Chase points if you're able to spend $8,000 worth of business purchases in the first three months. There's other options like other Ink cards, like the Ink Unlimited and the Ink Cash. Those are business cards. And then there's also the Sapphire Reserve on the personal side and also the freedom cards that will help you earn chase points faster with the sign-up bonuses. If you are thinking about signing up for a Chase card or any other cards for that matter, I do have a link in my description. It is a referral link and that'll just help out the channel in a big way if you decide to sign up for a card using that link. Now to transfer out your Chase points, you do need one of three cards, the Sapphire Preferred, the Sapphire Reserve, or the Business Card, the Ink Preferred. If you have one of these three cards, they do have annual fees, but this will allow you to transfer out your points through Chase's transfer partners and JetBlue is one of those transfer partners so I needed to hold one of these cards and I actually have two of them, the Ink Preferred and the Sapphire Preferred. Just remember that once you transfer out your Chase points to JetBlue or any other airline or hotel, you cannot transfer your points back over to Chase. So you wanna have your booking in mind and you wanna make sure that you really, really wanna take that trip, especially when we're talking about JetBlue because you will get your JetBlue points back in your account, 
but the taxes and fees that you paid with your credit card, those will not go back to your credit card. They will go back into your JetBlue account as a credit for future purchases. So just make sure that you really want to complete this flight if you're going to go down the JetBlue path. So now let's get on to booking my flight. I did check the Chase Travel Portal just to see what kind of cost that would be if I booked it that way. For the cash price, it says $452. For the blue basic, that is the most basic you can get for your flight ticket, and it wouldn't come with a carry-on bag or anything like that, which is actually okay with me because my wife and I, we just carried one backpack each and we were good for the Caribbean. And if I wanted to pay Chase points directly on the travel portal, it would cost 36,000 points to make this booking. And that's when I realized, okay, it's time to transfer out our Chase points to JetBlue because I only need to transfer 27,000 Chase points instead of paying 36,000 Chase points on the portal. Looking on the JetBlue website, it is going to cost 17,400 points for one person. So for two people, that's 34,800 points. And I already had 1,000 points in my JetBlue account from previous travels. And so I just needed a little under 34,000 points. Transferring my Chase points over to JetBlue was very quick. Just log on to the Chase website, go to transfer my points, and then we we just put in, we wanted 27,000 points to transfer over to JetBlue. The point transfer was pretty much instant. I just had to wait like five or 10 seconds and then refresh the JetBlue website and the points were in my account. And you can also see from my activity that I got a bonus 6,750 points for transferring during this bonus period. Now that I was ready to select my flight, I noticed that Blue Basic was not an option on the JetBlue website. I guess for all awards, bookings you can't just get the very basic which I guess is kind of nice because that meant I did get a free carry-on even though I didn't need it. This ticket level also comes with no change fees, no cancel fees, so I guess that is a very nice added perk there. Clicking through the screens, I was able to see that I would be paying a total price of 34,800 JetBlue points and $31.20 of taxes and fees for two tickets. The taxes and fees are slightly higher than the minimum amount of taxes and fees that you're going to be paying for a U.S. trip. And so I wanted to click on what the tax and fees all entailed. And there is that $5.60 for that 9-11 fee that is completely standard on all U.S. bookings. And then there was a $10 charge for each ticket for well, they didn't actually tell me. It was just a, a blank line there, but this was not going to make or break it for me. I was still going to take the flight anyway. So I'm like, Okay, I'll just pay the extra $20. After filling in my personal details, frequent flyer numbers, uh, TSA pre-check numbers, global entry, all of that, we were able to select our seats and we were able to, I mean, it was all economy flight, so it didn't really matter. We just couldn't choose the seats at the front because those were for people that were paying more points than us. Then I put in my payment details to pay the $31.20 of fees, and then we completed the booking, and that's how we're flying to the Caribbean on points, but now we have to look at how many cents per point I got for this booking. Cents per point is calculated by taking the cash price in dollars, subtracting the taxes and fees, and then multiplying that number by 100 to get the total cents. And then you divide that by how many points you paid, and then you get your cents per point. I could take the blue basic fare for the original cash price because that is what I would have paid for this ticket. I didn't need that additional upgrade to the blue ticket, but since the blue ticket did come with my award booking, maybe I should calculate it based off of that. So I'll just run you through those couple calculations. But first, starting off with the Chase Travel Portal, I could have paid using my Sapphire Preferred or my Ink Preferred, and I would have got a boost of 25% through the Chase Travel Portal if I used points that way. So if we just did the blue basic ticket, I would have had to pay just over 36,000 points for that. And then that would come out to a cents per point calculation of 1.25 cents per point. But I knew I could do better, so let's continue. If I were to be calculating the cents per point based off of the blue basic rate that I would have paid for this flight, it would be $451.40. And then I would subtract 
subtract the taxes and fees of $31.20, multiply that by 100, divide it by the amount of points I would need to transfer to make this booking happen. I only transferred 27,000 points, but I'm gonna say 28,000 points because I'm just gonna assume you have zero JetBlue points in your account. You didn't need the full 28,000 points coming out of your Chase account to make this booking happen with the 25% transfer bonus, but you do have to transfer Chase points in increments of 1,000 points, and so you would have to round up to the nearest points. So 28,000 points transferred, this would come out to a cents per point calculation of just about 1.5 cents per point, which is definitely not like the best thing ever, but it is nice and helpful that you didn't have to pay $450 for this flight. I didn't necessarily need the blue rate because I didn't need a carry-on, but a lot of people would like that option. So this cash price was around $532, and then you subtract the taxes and fees once again, divide it by the transferred points, which could come out to 28,000 chase points, and then the cents per point calculation is going to come out to a little more reasonable of 1.8 cents per point. Looking back on this redemption, I am grateful that I did not have to pay the cash price, but it definitely wasn't the best redemption in the world, but that is okay with me. And of course, with that 25% transfer bonus, I probably would not have transferred out my points if I did not have this bonus. And instead, I might have looked for other ways to redeem my points and maybe getting the Chase Sapphire Reserve might help with that because there is a 50% boost through the travel portal. And that's actually what I made my last video on, on if I should actually get the Sapphire Reserve instead of the Sapphire Preferred. So if you wanna check out that video, it'll be right there. And don't forget to click on any links in my description for referral links to credit cards that will hugely support the channel in a big way. And I can't thank you enough if you decide to sign up for a card using that link and I'll see you in the next video.